Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Keep Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Lou Nevis Jr., and I'm joined by the rest of the team of Keep Gaming Podcast. Paul Full, what is up? Not oh. much. I get my gun. I'm ready. <laughs> we are also joined by Mayamo CG. What's going on? Uh-huh. And the one and only Johnny Boombots. What's up, John? Yo, thank you for having me. It's great to be back on the podcast this week. I really appreciate you guys letting me be a guest. Lou, welcome. I appreciate you, bro. Thank I appreciate you. you coming back on, man. It means a lot to us. Appreciate thank you. it. Yeah. It means a lot to me to have you here. <laughs> what? <laughs> This is episode 28, where we talk all gaming news and everything in pop culture news. Today, we're going to be talking about the biggest news, and that was the Twitch be- breach. I was going to say beach. The Twitch breach. Twitch beach. <laughs> I want to go there. Hey, <laughs> the hot That's what the hot tub is for. Exactly. Let's go beach. <laughs> So, get mad exactly. so as oh we gosh. already know, us Twitch streamers and viewers, uh, Twitch was breached and a lot of information was leaked, such as payouts for monthly payouts or from going back from 2019 uh, up until this year. Also, a competitor to Steam, which is called v- uh, Veeper, I think it was called? Or Reaper? Vapor. 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 Sorry. <laughs> and uh more news coming after that as well today paulful informed us that last night twitch was hacked with jeff bezos face on <laughs> all the games for at least two hours on the web uh not on your phone you couldn't see it on the phone app but on the web you will see jeff bezos face on all the games so guys what are your thoughts on this twitch breach am i saying that right twitch it's a tongue twister. Yes, yes. Twitch breach. Yeah, it's a breach. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to start with, with John. John, what are your thoughts on this, man? Come on, Jeffrey. You can do it. Um, <laughs> Take the way. I, got... <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey Bezos. Jeffrey Bezos. All right. All right. Stop. <laughs> we'll stop. We'll my all right. So, um, so there's two things I will say about the huge, the Twitch leak. Um. The, the initial breach, though, being the fact that Twitch, a lot of people have heard um, say that the Twitch breach is a huge thing because it's owned by Amazon. But we discussed that before, too, though, that I don't I don't consider Twitch to be part of Amazon. Yes, it's part of it's part of Amazon, but I don't consider it to be like a concern of Amazon's kind of thing. I don't consider okay. it to be a, a concern for Jeffrey Bezos. Um, no, definitely Because Twitch is literally a drop in a bucket for Amazon. They, they don't make any money. Twitch has even been known, too, that they don't make money. Like, they don't make funds off of the streamers and stuff, really, too. Like the amount of money that they, the amount of money they make is so minute compared okay. to what you would think because they, make. they because, do make money off of us. If that was the case, they would give us the right, yeah, right. right. They would give us a 60 40 split or something like that. Though. Yeah. Instead, they give us a 50 50. So, you saw that there was a leak of a lot of the streamers, they gave you the information as to what they were making, they give you like the top 500 streamers, what they make, and everything else. Too. Mm-hmm. That's not something that a lot of people were shocked about it because a lot of people don't, don't know about Twitch or know about gaming in general or anything yeah. like that they don't know just do the math find out how many subs they got do the math you can find it out they have websites that give you all the twitches twitch streamers information how much they make um so it's not shocking with that um as far as the fact that they got hacked that's not shocking either it's a company hacking happens every day i mean like you work for the government even when you when you work for the government where it's a place you think that you would actually be safe with They've they've been hacked as an employee of the government. Course, you got yeah. hacked where they gave out social security and shit that too. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. not where it's something unheard of. My opinion of it was cool. We got hacked. Change your passwords. Move on. Um, yep. it doesn't affect us. It doesn't affect me or us because of the fact that what are they gonna do? Steal my fifteen viewers? Steal my that, that come into my chat every fucking month? What about that? But like you know what I mean? Like there was nothing much that's really like affecting us on the big end. Okay. The bigger streamers, yes, they have more to lose. Like a lot of the bigger end, they might have more to lose, more to get out there if they get hacked and get their information out there. But again, though, it's not something that was so over the top. PlayStation being breached was more of a shocker to me than Twitch. Really? For me, it's more of a shocker that it took them this long to breach Twitch. That somebody never even tried doing it before kind of thing. Okay. And I also feel that this wasn't done maliciously where they're trying to get information on streamers. They were just trying to put that information out there and be like, yo, like somebody that's really just butthurt and was like, oh, look at all the money that they're making. Something like that, though, and that's what they put it out there for. It wasn't something that was done maliciously to try to, like, ruin everybody's stream or anything like that at all, though. It just happened and went, went on with it. As far as yesterday's goes, that was funny as shit, in my opinion. That was just a troll move because they they, right. they hacked the, top, uh, the code line of it to basically kind of make it like, we could take it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And any company, though, too, you're talking about a company like Twitch has millions of people constantly going through their servers. Millions of people. I don't know of any IT software, and I'm not an IT person, but I don't think there's any kind of IT text or IT software 
that would not be surprised about something like this happening when you have millions of people accessing their service constantly. They, they, and you know, technology is always updating. So the fact that it hasn't happened before is shocking to me. The fact that they haven't been able to get into the service before and do this before. That's why I stand on that though. But I can understand why people might be a little more concerned about it, a little more upset about it, but it's not a shocker to me on that, that level. And mm-hmm. I don't think Amazon gives a shit because again, you're talking about dollars on the dollar, you know, you're talking about pennies on the on the dollar is what they're basically twitch is for them. So all right, Chris, what are your thoughts, man? Um, I mean, it doesn't really scare me to the point where I'm not gonna be streaming anymore, mm-hmm. even though I retired uh two weeks ago. <laughs> um <nah. laughs> um, but like it's funny because you see people getting shocked. I think the only people that were shocked about the amount of money these streamers make. Where people who don't know what Twitch is yeah, or don't know anything stream, about yeah. streaming, because mm-hmm. it's like, yo, we know all these people are millionaires. Obviously, we didn't know how much they were making. Yeah, yeah. Month, unless you really wanted to do, you know, clock people's pockets. But you know, people were shocked about that, and it was like, it's not a shocker to me. I've been on Twitch for three years now. It's like, yo, these people have been doing this for years. They've been grinding it out. Now, for them, it's probably a bigger risk. I know a lot of people recently have switched over to. Uh, YouTube, a lot of big streamers that were on Twitch I switched over to YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, even before that, they uh, before Mixer messed up, two yeah. of the biggest streamers switched over to Mixer. So it's like, I, I, I read the article, and the article was saying that this person did it because they wanted to create more uh, competition between streaming platforms. And it's like, dude, there's already competition, for one, to me. And it's like, what was the point of it then? Like, why did you do it? Why did you put all these people on blast? Yeah. For what? What was the purpose outside of creating competition because the competition has always been there. You got Facebook gaming now. Yeah. They're figuring out how to optimize their app. They do have their own separate app. Now YouTube has been had its own separate app. Now, if anything, people get a lot more viewers on YouTube because people are on YouTube more than Twitch. Most likely it's the number one search Um, engine in the world. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, I I don't get where this whole, there's no competition for Twitch type of thing. Now, if you got an issue with Amazon and Jeff Bezos, which they might because they put his face on everything. Then I get it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they, they were an Amazon employee and they were like, nah, this guy's a bum. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't scare yeah. me. Um, uh, as far as the whole gaming platform, that's another thing of competition uh, that if Amazon wants to do it, uh, other things have, other uh, places have tried to do it, like the Epic Game Store, but, uh, you know, they they pretty they failed pretty epically, pun intended. <laughs> um to the point where they're literally just giving most people just use the Epic Game Store on PC for the free game. Yeah. Because that's like their main thing now. And they're Ooh, losing money. Of, I gotta download you one. know what I'm saying? They're losing money because of that. So now Amazon, obviously, I don't think they're gonna be losing money. Uh we're gonna if, if this is true, we will see uh what they offer as far as games. We already know New World is super popular, and that's something made from their studios. So let's see if they maybe they have other exclusive to Amazon Studios mm-hmm. that they're working on. That they're gonna put on this platform if the, if it this is true, you know. Paul, what are your thoughts? I mean, just oh, wait, Johnny. Did you want to say something? No, no, sorry. I just can't <laughs> see one thing real quick. I didn't even before I think, oh, yeah. you got my train of thought. I didn't even think about that, Chris, because they actually are releasing a new MMO for 2022 as well. Right. Yeah. They're doing the beta testing, and I wonder if that would be one of those things that would jump on that. Sorry, Paul. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that. you're fine. You're fine. I figured it was something really quick. I mean, just to kind of piggyback off of everybody else, it's like I'm not concerned. Like Johnny said, like change your passwords, change your stream key, move on. Um, it seems more like it was just a breach from what I was reading online of just how much people were making versus like actually like people's addresses, the how they pay, right. and like mm-hmm. all the seat, like all the sensitive <clears throat> information really didn't get leaked. So it again, not really a concern, just change your passwords as precaution, you know, be smart about it. But like, I feel, I hate that <clears throat> people are like getting upset about how much people are making. It's like, A, you're donating and subbing to people. All of these people have their sub counts public. So it's like, again, do the math. You can, you know, easy multiplication kind of thing. And like YouTube had this thing too a few years ago where people were finding out how much bigger YouTubers were making. And it's like, well, yeah, they also get ad- advertisers, sponsorships and all that stuff. Like they're getting paid. Like, of course they're making money. It's kind of like a moot point. And like Chris said, I don't understand the point of it. Like if someone wanted to create competition, it already exists. It just seems more of 
just like a troll move in my opinion like someone right, yeah. was just like let's get these people who don't know what twitch is upset about twitch existing like it just feels like that and then last night's uh jeffrey bezos prank right it just really feels like they're just trolling us they're like we can do this and now that song just popped right. in my head but uh, <laughs> but like they didn't do anything other than what's publicly available. Like you can, there are a bunch of websites that tell you how much these streamers make or YouTubers or what have you, like you can look at it. It's not the most accurate, um, but still you get a good ballpark of like what they're making. So again, it just seems like a moot point. Like someone just was like bored and did it. And they were like, Hey, look, I'm going to get like my five seconds of fame and then move mm -hmm. on. That's how I feel. Yeah, I totally agree. I think this here doesn't affect anyone like, because what was just said to uh, Mr. Chris Respect in the chat, the sensitive information and everyone else stated here too wasn't really leaked. It was really their numbers as far as what they made, but nothing to the point where it'll scare you like, should I leave? Uh, hacks happen yeah. all the time. It's happened on Facebook and people still stay on Facebook with all their data being breached and all that information being leaked. It's happened multiple times on Facebook where people still stay on Facebook. Uh, it's still one of the biggest social media platforms. They even own Instagram and people leave Facebook but still have Instagram. So it's like, if they want to hack, they're going to hack. It, it doesn't matter uh, how you look at this. I feel like, oh, I was going to say, <laughs> someone's one barking. Let me, let, me, let me calm the dog. <laughs> I also feel that this uh, also opens up the idea of people who are already streaming on Twitch, giving them the idea, maybe maybe I should switch to another platform. People have been thinking about this because of all the hate raids and the bots that have been going on yeah. Twitch, and they haven't made any adjustments because it still happens. I know it happened, of course, a couple of weeks ago where it was just nonstop, where you're getting hot nonstop. And they haven't really done anything to fix these little issues that are big to us and they have the power to do so it's a trillion dollar company and even john said amazon just doesn't really care about twitch it's just it's just a platform for them and it's not really something that they care for so i feel that if you are a streamer and you are reconsidering think about what you're reconsidering if you're leaving to youtube what are you going to bring to youtube that twitch doesn't already have at this point uh, I, for one, have left and came back. And I'm not saying one is better than the other, but don't allow this troll leak or hack make you force the decision. I think it is a still a place for us streamers to grow and communicate like we are right now and build a community. But to build a competition, like Chris said, there's competition already out there. So I, I think this was just like Paul Fool was saying, uh, someone's getting their 15 minutes of fame and just wanted to troll people and letting people know that it's possible. And I think we all knew, even John said it, even the government gets hacked too. So right. anything can happen at any point. I, I think this was just a joke and a waste of people's time. Right. And then especially with the competition thing, because that's really what stood out to me on the article itself. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if it wasn't for the competition where like somebody like a Tim the Tatman left the YouTube, mm -hmm. um, I know uh, Courage left the YouTube, Valkyrie left the YouTube, all these people got major contracts with YouTube gaming, right? Mm -hmm. Now, because of them leaving and getting their contracts at YouTube gaming, Nick Merckx probably just signed the biggest deal of his life to Twitch yeah. because they had to know like, yo, we got to pay out. We have to pay him because if not, he can easily just go play with his friends, yeah. especially because him going to YouTube would have gave him the opportunity to play with one of his friends, Dr. Disrespect, mm -hmm. which people know and love, and he's huge on YouTube now. Yeah. I mean, he was already big, but, yeah. you know, his YouTube numbers are crazy. He only streams like three times a week now. He doesn't even care, you know? So it's like, it's a lot of money out there. It's a lot of competition. It's like, I really just want to know, if it was a troll, what the hell was the point of it? Why? Mm -hmm. Why would you do such a thing? Yeah, it's scary. Just part one too, because these say I don't know who this person is, but they stated this is just part one of this right. leak. There's another part coming. We just don't know what it is. You know, I I don't know. I see. I think it could also be above all else too is the fact that like I know that um, Low Tone said every big streamer starts changing over to YouTube, Twitch thing gets hacked, and a lot of bots come. It's weird. So if you want to like think of it that way, that is true. That it could be also one of those things like. All of a sudden, Twitch has one of those things like, you know, like you're dying or whatever like that, though. And it's kind of like, let me sabotage whoever left already. You guys are all leaving my platform. Fuck it. I'm going to just let you guys get, go for it. You know <laughs> what I mean? Because in all reality, it's, it's again, you're talking about how many streamers are there. And the only ones that there are that are being talked about right now are literally a top 100. And those are the ones that are leaving. And it's not even top 100 because, like I said to you before, too, a streamer that I watch, Co Cartage, he's number 24. 
but yet he doesn't even make any of the headlines for any of the shit that's going on because he's not predominant like that. He makes more money than he makes more money than half the other streamers that we are talking about. But yet nobody talks about him because he's not in the public eye. He's mm-hmm. not your bigger streamer. He's not your Call of Duty streamer. He's not your Nick Merckx. He's yeah. not your Doctor Disrespect. He's not, not your you know Valkyrie. <laughs> right. He's not your Ninja. When Ninja came in, they give me like, and these are the ones that, in all reality, that you'll see them like some like here you go like King Chipper said he loves Co. Exactly. Co is a great streamer, a great dude. He's a very knowledgeable guy. He knows a lot about Twitch. However, though, you don't hear him. People aren't like, oh, my God, you're making that much money. No, because nobody cares because they love him for who he is. But it's the ones that you're hearing this all about are the ones that Tim the Tapman, the ones that are mean, that they make their money off of being shock value. They make their money off of having that that idea of, like, yelling and, like, you know, being louder than the other person kind of thing and being out there and being in your face. And those are the ones that make it because right now Call of Duty is a big game. Yeah. Uh, Call of Duty is, is a very huge game. Yeah. Right, so Warzone, yeah. these are where these people are making the money off of. When Fortnite was a huge thing, guess what? Ninja was in the fucking front papers of everything. Yeah, if Fortnite's time, not yeah. popular no more, guess what? You don't hear about Ninja no more. Ninja is doing his own thing. Very rare. He doesn't give a fuck. Ninja's he playing, playing Final, Final, Final Fantasy. Oh, he made, yo, he made his millions and he's out. Yeah. Right. He's still, he made, made, he's still making millions, though. He's still making millions. That Mixer deal was huge. He made his money. Yeah. Right, Mixer. Right, he went to Mixer. He made his that money off huge. that. He sold. He, he 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 was the first one to go to Mixer. Big ass thing going to Mixer. Mixer failed. Mill. Guess what? Mill. He no still made, made his money. And now he's back on Twitch again. Yeah. Now he's back on Twitch. He don't give a fuck. He plays Valorant. He gets literally a quarter of the views that he usually gets when he plays yeah. Fortnite. He jumps on Fortnite one day a month. He still gets those fifteen thousand views. He goes the next day to Valorant. He makes two thousand views, but he still makes his money. He doesn't give a fuck. But the ones that are really important this though are your Nick Merckx, your Tim the Tapman, Dr. Disrespect, because those are the ones that are big enough that went to YouTube. Because the only competition that I think that Twitch ever has is YouTube. Do I think that Twitch is going to go under? No. I've seen Twitch go through so much shit throughout the years that I've been on Twitch, from hate raids to bots to other issues. It's always something. It was the, it was the bikini streamers. The hot tub streamers were a huge issue. Guess what? They gave them their own platform. Yeah, now yeah, you don't hear about him anymore. Yeah, you so hear about you know the hate <laughs> raids, the hate bots. That's Prince of Fairy Channel. <laughs> That's the a hate raiders, the bots, and everything else too. Guess what? The bots come in. The bots are there. Guess what? They make a new bot. The bots are gone. The hate right. raids. They have it all the time. It's not something new. Once they start putting new tags out there, it's just the new flavor of the week. They put the LGBT t- tags on there. They put the safe space tags on Twitch. Guess what? New tag. A lot of people are using it. A lot of people are using it because of the fact that they want the recognition, which is what's causing the problems too. Because you got people that are not in the LGBT community that don't give a fuck about it, that are just using the LGBT tag because of the fact that they want the views. Mm-hmm. Right. And guess what? Those yeah. are the ones that are getting hate rated. So the ones that are playing, you know, they're playing that both sides of the card. And so no matter what, though, it's always going to be a huge thing because you're talking about a huge, huge, huge streaming platform. Mixer would have been the only competition that literally could have put Twitch out of business. Mixer would have been the only one if Mixer would have actually got their discoverability shit the right way, they would have been they would have been fine. But they had a That's huge a issue no. with putting people on discoverability because Mixer. they gave it to the little people. They gave it to the little people and they had them on the front page. But it was right. their there was their it was their operating system and the way they did it was too different from Twitch. If they would have left it because Twitch is, Twitch gives you the algorithm. Twitch will let anybody take the fucking algorithm that they use and let them use your coding. To make your own platform, Twitch will let you literally let you use their coding to make a streaming platform because they don't give a fuck, because they know that they don't have competition. The only one they had competition with was Mixer, and if Mixer would have gotten it right, it would have put Twitch under, or it would have been the two p- platforms. That's it. Facebook is no competition because Facebook is Facebook, and I'm sorry, but like a lot of times too, Facebook their problem is the fact that I constantly get notifications if I follow you somebody, I get it through my whole news feed or my regular news feed. I don't want yeah. that shit. Give me my yeah. gaming section if I go to it. And that's the thing Twitch, they got. I go to. That's now it. has their own gaming app, but the the interface and like how it runs, the app is not that good at all, like at yeah. all. Like Twitch has probably the best uh, the best app, mobile app, where you can like sub, do all this extra stuff on your phone over everything else. Maybe uh, YouTube has definitely been around for forever. Um, right. like Mr. Chris is saying that it has better discoverability and stuff in some ways. But yeah, that was also a, mm-hmm. YouTube is also very hard to stream on yeah. because if you don't have a good amount of subscribers and you're doing the same stuff that all the other guys are doing, oof, it's rough. It's hard to yeah. do that. But if you want to make that switch, that's up to you. I, I wouldn't let this scare you into making that switch. Like, oh, 100%. If you're going to make a switch, do it because you feel comfortable doing it and that's what you wanted to do for a while. Like, it's something you've been thinking about and you got a plan for it, you know? <clears throat> 
Don't jump the yeah. shark, they say. You, you're, literally, right. you're literally jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. No matter what, you're literally going from yep. one streaming platform to the other one, and every single one of them are going to have their benefits, their perks, and their downfalls, no matter how you look at it. And the same thing with YouTube, YouTube uh, streamers, like YouTube content creators. A lot of them are big. A lot of them are huge. But guess what, though? They jumped on the bandwagon when YouTube first took off 15 years ago. They've been grinding right. their ass off. People like Nick Burks, Tim the Tapman, and them too. They jumped on when Twitch first became Twitch after Justin TV. Some of them were right. on Justin TV. The, the, these numbers are crazy. But guess what, though? You're talking about 10 years in. So yeah. going, people want that quick theme that let me go full time, let me go become a podcast, let me go become a Twitch streamer, let me become whatever. Six months, they don't make it, they give up. It's not the case. You literally got to grind your ass off on this shift every day for years yeah. before you might make it. And it's not even a guarantee you're going to make it. Do right. it for what you love. And if you love whatever you do, that's it. Yeah, Choose where you want to go to. I had mentioned that on my stream earlier this week that I feel like people look at streaming like this is something that happens overnight. But I, I think I look at it differently. I look at it like in sports. And I mentioned this before, too, that you don't just make it straight to the major leagues, whether it be baseball, basketball, football, hockey. There's a transition period of how you get there. You go little league, school, college, you know, triple A minors, and then you get to the big league. It just doesn't happen overnight. And I feel like a lot of streamers feel that it should happen that fast because they're streaming every day, 12 hour streams. And it's more than just that. You got to promote yourself. You got to connect and you got to um, network with people and build communities. And, and that all takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Some people make partner faster than others. That's great. I think that's wonderful. There's people that made it straight from high school into the NBA. Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, LeBron James. Yeah. So it's like there are those special people that do have that opportunity. But for the most of all of us, we have to grind this shit out until you give up or until you reach your peak and then you take it from there. But a lot of these guys, it took them time. It didn't happen overnight. And that's I think that's the right. problem here. People see those numbers they're like I'm quitting my job today. I'm going to go stream. It don't work like that. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. right. oh, oh, a lot of times, too, the other downside is, too, is that if you get that quick theme, it's the same shit like the follow for follow discords. You get that quick theme. That's great. But guess what, though? Two weeks from now, where the hell are your followers? Two weeks from now, yeah. where's all that fame you had? You got that yeah. one month of like, oh, my God, I made six grand that one month. Next month, you're sitting there making a dollar ninety nine. You ain't even getting paid off of Twitch. Why? Yeah. Because you had that quick fame, that quick cloud. You need to build like a house. You can't just turn around and just make a house, throw the three floors on top of like some twigs or whatever like that and hope for the Easy best. Easy peasy, baby. <laughs> now, I was going to say, like, I think in the next couple months, because of these numbers being leaked and how much money these guys are making, I think we're going to see a lot of new streamers. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And I think we're going to see a lot of people quit in the next couple months as well. Because, because they're, they're going to start and they're going to be yeah. like, wait, oh, they all they do is play video games on stream. That's easy. That's no problem. I can do that. I do that shit every day without putting on. It's not that it's easy, not family. Not easy, bro. I can promise you that it is not that easy. You got to yep. come up with a game plan. You got to figure out what you want to play. Oh, you're gonna play the same game as them? Guess what? They can go to Nick Merck's all they want for Call of Duty content for Apex content because he's on Apex now. They could go to him for that. Why would they go to you, some nobody that nobody knows about, but, yeah. where you got you and, and your wife only watching? Hey, no, they're gonna go to Nick Merck's, bro, who's been doing this for years, who knows how to entertain people. Whether he's playing good or not, he could suck all day and he'll still have 20 to 50,000 viewers because he's Nick Merckx and he's built his, his brand to that extent. Right. So I think that's going to happen in these next couple months and it's going to be fun to watch, you know? I think, I think, I'm oh, sorry, Lou. I think that the one thing that I will say is that I've been hearing and I've noticed, and again, a lot of people know that I've done this for years and I've even heard and I've gotten into, I've heard from people too that see what. I started streaming only six months ago. And I see a lot of people that literally tell me, I want to be you because of the fact that they see a little bit of success that I'm having. A little, a little of not, not saying that I'm fucking Nick Merckx or some shit, but they see like the constant, the, the little bit of success, whatever. And they say like, oh, I want to be you. I don't know how you did it so fast. Guys, it's not that I did it fast. I have eight years of experience with Twitch on the back end that I've used. And it's not so much that you literally just get on and turn the camera on. Lou could tell you, Paul could tell you, Chris could tell you too. Anybody that ever wants to stream, even the streamers in chat right now, all of our streamers. It's a five hours on stream, but it's 10 hours off stream that like you're working behind the scenes. You are not on camera. For, you're on camera for five hours, but you are working. Literally, my wife can tell you, I am on my phone 23 out of 24. If I'm awake, my phone is in my hand trying to network or trying to do something. And you're never, you're never making it. You got to just keep on grinding your ass off, though. And it's not easy. And the fact that people see it and like, yes, I understand that people have full-time jobs and all. Not everybody can be lucky enough to be able to do this as a full-time thing where you can put all your time and effort into just streaming. That's the truth. 
But at the same time, though, too, it depends on how much you want something, though, too, if you're willing to grind on it and willing to bust your ass on it, too. Because yeah. I know Chris works long hours, but my dude is still, when he's not working, he is on his computer making clips for months at a time, for weeks, up ahead, just constantly, yeah. constantly, constantly grinding. Lou, constantly grinding on different things, whatever, that, different ideas, stuff like that, too. You know, going to McDonald's, getting those, trying to get those sponsorships from McDonald's. You know, <laughs> right. like, it's hard. I it's need hard. McDonald's <laughs> for life, bro. <laughs> Yo, Mickey <laughs> D's, if you're listening... <laughs> I want S -tier those. to this guy. S tier. Yeah. Look at this guy. I need that deal. Sponsor <laughs> me, bro. Just McDonald's and Elgato, and I'm good. That's all Just I imagine. Got. Get, uh, imagine that. You're getting way too up. serious. Had to take a break. How to right. cut that imagine out. Imagine that ad popping up, and you just see Lou like, "Hey guys, I'm loving imagine. it." Yeah. <laughs> Yo, imagine seeing him in a my commercial. Elgato. <laughs> Yo, imagine seeing him in a commercial with a McDonald's and an Elgato camp together, just like. Hey guys, yo, oh, we're gonna make a, that, that'd be his dream scenario. That's bro. gonna be the collab. That's gonna, yo, right. when that happens, ASMR bro, McDonald's remember. in the mic. <laughs> that's in the it. fucking mic all day long with that's ASMR. It. Hey, ASMR. <laughs> I was I'm gonna say ASMR. something. I, I recently streamed on Thursday Call of Duty Season 6 for eight hours. That's the longest I've ever streamed. And, bro, I was tired. I know that John has done long streams yo. as well. I oh legit God. was exhausted from playing. And yeah, you're probably, oh, you're playing a video game. No, it's a lot of work because it's like, I'm looking, I'm talking, I'm doing this. And there's a lot of, it's not just playing games yeah. and relaxing. I haven't left the you're seat. My down. ass was hurting. Your my butt's hurt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, I slept for 10 hours, bro. Like I looked at my sleep time on my phone. It was like 10 hours. Like, yeah, I needed that shit. After streaming for eight hours. It's hard work, bro. Yeah, it's fun. I'm enjoying what I'm doing, but this is hard work, bro. It's not easy. And like what John was saying too, like when we're off stream, we're literally working. I'm editing, making clips, uh, you know, working with Wes and John and, and Paul for all these guys are talking about what we're gonna do on the next show, uh, when we're gonna do reacts, yep. uh, all this other shit. There's a lot of things on my end, and I'm like, uh, it's exhausting. And when I start working, because right now I'm not working, when I start working, it's gonna be even worse, bro. So I can yep. only imagine for the people that work and stream, that shit is tough. So I give credit when to Luke starts that working. Do it. You're not gonna see him ever again on Call of Duty. You're gonna see him once a once a once a week for like an hour at a time. Be like, ah, I didn't get a kill. I quit. Fuck you. I'm out. That's it. Yeah, much. I, I just My dogs didn't like that either. <laughs> uh, no, I was gonna say I wanted to get to the the last topic here about their competition app that's gonna be supposedly in competition with Steam. Is this something that we're interested in? I know I don't have a PC, so I don't use Steam. But is Amazon gonna be making this Vapor app? that's going to really kill steam i don't know what do you guys thought it's paul for um oh, oh. i was gonna say no no hey, it, i'm the pc guy you know what i'm saying so no, i know she has a pc you know you guys have pc but i figured you know do you have any she thoughts even on this? Downloaded her, her, her laptop's I was gonna just going to say, I was going to say, <laughs> yo, yo, the only problem is, really yo, her laptop, right now? Her laptop downloads vapor. It's gonna look like a vape pen. That shit's gonna be smoking <laughs> out the ass, bro. <laughs> She's gonna be downloading like vapor and not actually. Set app. It on fire. I'm just set that shit on fire. Like I, oof. um, I I think it's gonna be nice. Okay, now we're gonna mix two. I think it's gonna be nice for Steam to have competition. Um, just because. For me personally, I use Steam a lot when my laptop can handle it. Yeah. Um, and I use and but there's a. The thing is, is like you can get Xbox Game Pass on PC as well. I mean, Epic Games. There's a lot of sites you can get games from. I just think it's just another thing in the mix. You know, mm -hmm. it's just going to be another site you can get games. There's going to be bad games, good games, you know, mid tier games. So I'm excited to see what they have to offer that will be like exclusive to them, you know, because again, a lot of those games, except for like Xbox Game Pass mainly, mm -hmm. um, you can get a lot of them from different places and you just, Essentially, I buy from Steam because I got it for cheaper or I got it for right. free. So except for Game Pass, you get Xbox exclusive games. That's about it. So I'm kind of curious. Chris, what are your thoughts on this? I was going to say, like, I don't think anything's ever going to kill Steam because Steam has such a, a freaking a crazy library. They got so many games say, on Steam. They have been in the making it, for it, a long time. That's what I'm saying. It, <laughs> I don't think anything's ever going to uh, take over. But to have competition is always cool because, like, right now on my PC... Like Paul Full mentioned, you got the Game Pass, you got the Epic Store, you got Origins, you got EA Play, you got I got They're PS so Now, I got all this stuff. stuff. I use all of them. I use every single one. Mm -hmm. But I still always go back to Steam to check what's new because they got certain stuff that's just for Steam only. Now, if Amazon can continue doing what they're doing with their stuff, because 
as we said before, New World is such a hit. Like people love this game. Yeah. Every the big streamers that play this, they're getting a ton of viewers on it. Like I saw Shroud the other day at like 70k. And I'm like, what? And Shroud <laughs> to me is boring as hell. Sorry. He he's boring to watch. He's like real stale in the face. He's he got good aim on first person shooters. But uh, other than that, he's not really like that fun to watch. But for him to have 70k on a game like that, yeah. So if they can keep coming up, um, if they can keep coming up with games uh themselves like i think it'll be cool especially for somebody like me like likes indie games like maybe more Whoa. indie developers want to work on a game for amazon and they come up with their own thing and they're on that. That, that's also yeah. i think it's great a great opportunity for indie games and other developers like smaller developers to get an exclusive game on amazon to give some competition Whoa. to everything else you know it's just more games for the gamers it's good for everything competition is great yeah, for gamers good. we need right. it it's so, a win-win so <laughs> What I will say, though, too, is a lot of people are sleeping on Amazon, and a lot of people don't even know. Amazon already does something like Epic Games. Amazon mm-hmm. gives you, every month, they give you big AAA games to download for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as long as you have Amazon Prime. Granted, Epic is for free, but if you have Amazon Prime, then at that point, you can get like AAA games for free. Um I'm sorry, Johnny. I think they heard some for party. No, they didn't hear that. They hear somebody downstairs coming to the house. Um oh, so you have AAA games that Amazon releases for free. Then they also have a lot of – Amazon has a lot of deals with a lot of your bigger games, with Fortnite. They have a lot of deals with Valorant where you can get skins. You can get – with Smite, you can get – you know, if you have Amazon Prime, you get exclusive things to it. Mm. So I think for Amazon, though, so many people have Amazon Prime that that's where they're trying to push it. That's the same reason why with Twitch you get a free Prime a – a free sub to, right, a, month, to yeah. a Twitch streamer if you want every month. Um, yeah. Competition, hundred percent, is a great thing. Um, I do think, though, that with them doing that, it's going to be interesting to say the least, because of the fact that Steam is Steam, no matter what. Steam and yeah. Valve, like Valve, has been around since you know Half Life when you used to play on I used to play on ICQ chat chat box ICQ whatever like that you used to play in land parties with your friends, and it was all like DOS code just to get into the fucking game. You know what I mean? So Valve is left for dead too. Valve, Valve, Valve has. Valve is a company that people don't even know that they play games that are made by like that owned by Valve. Yeah. Valve mm-hmm. is that company behind the scenes where they pretty much own the gaming industry and people are just like if you look oh. further back like oh I'm playing for this company but no you're actually the parent company of that company is Valve. So yeah. Do I think oh, that yeah. that's the only thing where I think that it's a, a, a I think it's kind of like a comp- comparison where it might be a little bit of a, a, an issue because of the fact that Amazon and Valve are two of your biggest things. So if Amazon does get in the games, the game section of it though too, you might have an issue with Valve where they might go head to head with it. But again though too, like you guys said, competition is competition, which makes for a lot of good shit. They did release though too in the leak, possibly that they might be looking to do like a PlayStation Home where it'd be a VR area too. VR, we do see VR is a big thing with a lot of streamers now too. Where they have the VR, the VR rings, where you have the VR, yeah. the VR streamers and stuff. Yes. They are very big, very, very big. VR streamers are a huge thing. We have some in our community that we know of that we love. Um, so with that being said, though, Valve, I, I want to see where Amazon goes with it because is that going to be down the road if they do that whole VR thing too? Are they going to be taking over Facebook at that point? Because Facebook has Oculus Quest. And Oculus Quest right now on Facebook has Horizons coming out. 3D open world platforming where you're looking towards Ready Player One kind of thing where it's interactive VR worlds. Valve tried to do it. They have Half-Life Alex. So like you have the VR is going to be the next step front going forward. They're getting more and more graphics. VR is starting to become more household in the names. Yeah. And if Amazon is trying to corner that before Valve could get their hands on it and trying to go that route, that's where you might see a huge issue with it. That's where you might see a big, big problem. Because like I said, in the leak, they did say that they are looking at VR VR stuff too in that leak, not just gaming. Mm-hmm. So it could be where they're trying to just corner a new market before it becomes fresh in the market and get their hands in it before anybody else does. I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting to see the, at the least. And Amazon, people forget, Amazon had, had actually released Amazon Luna about right. six or seven yes. months ago. Yep. Which is another oh, yeah. gaming platform, kind of like what Google Stadia tried to do with cloud gaming, where it's like Netflix on the go, PlayStation Now yeah. kind of stuff, where there's no downloads, it's just straight, you play the game and you stream it. And I feel like that's the future, and I don't know if Vapor is going to include something like that, considering that they're the same company. 
but competition's good, man. More games for the gamers, like you guys are saying. I, I'm I'm all for it. I just feel that it won't be something I would use because I don't even use Steam. I just play one game, and and it's been a difficult ride looking through other games and spending money. If I can get something where it's like a PlayStation Now or a Xbox Game Pass, where I pay monthly and I get to try these games for free, you know, I will appreciate that. Is this something yeah. that they were going to do we don't know i think that would be the next step because i know steam allows you to play it i think for maybe like an hour if i'm wrong you guys can correct me and then if you don't like it you can get a refund so right yeah. i don't know if this is what they're going to do I, I think that would be the best thing give us a trial period I, and i know places are going to be doing this now they're going to be doing um trial times where you can try something if you don't like it you, you'd have to pay for it and, and it's only for like, only an hour I need to go back on that real quick to, to negate what you just said about the PlayStation thing, though, too. Mm -hmm. So there is one huge there is one huge catch with that that PlayStation does not allow you to know, though. And I do know because I've had friends that work for PlayStation itself. So PlayStation will not give you a refund as soon as the trophy pops. If a trophy pops, you cannot get a, a refund. No, indie that's games they... and other smaller games know that the, the indie games and other small games, though, the reason why they do that is that's why they have it. The minute you load the game up and you start the game, a trophy pops. You cannot get a refund. No, I know, but they're talking about doing something like a trial. They, they haven't implemented it yet. This is something that PlayStation has been discussing and hasn't come out yet. But they are trying to do something where they give you an hour to try out the game, regardless if you get a trophy or not. And if you don't like it, you can get a, oh, a okay. refund. Uh, and if you do like it, you purchase it. You continue your gameplay from that moment in the trial. So you remember back in the okay. day, we used to get demos in disc. It's gonna be kind of like that. Oh my god! Yeah, Back yeah. in the day when we actually had a demo before you got the game, and you didn't have to buy pre-order the game to get the fucking yeah, demo. Yeah, like I gotta like pre-order a game oh, to find yeah. out if I want the game or not. Like, yeah, and I'm glad uh, some games are doing more open betas uh, now as right. time goes on. Kind of like what we did with Battlefield yeah. tw uh, 2042 and Back. That you Blood. loved it. You loved that. I, I absolutely yeah. love Battlefield 2042. It was the greatest game that I hated. <laughs> uh, so I advise no one play this game. It's it's the greatest <laughs> waste of time. <laughs> yeah. but that's besides that is there anything else you guys want to touch on before we go into the post show I was going to say oh, no, go ahead, Johnny, go ahead. <laughs> all I was going to say with uh, Steam is they do have a lot of open betas and demos and like even Nintendo with eShop is doing more demos a lot lately and I like that a lot so I'm hoping that if Vapor does become a thing that they'll stay on that bad bandwagon as well because like you mentioned we all need to try the game out before we buy it unless yeah, it's yeah. like i'm getting a sequel and i know that i love i like horizon zero dawn i know i'm gonna get horizon forbidden west because i love the first game so mm -hmm. i'm more inclined to get the second game like mm -hmm. that's the only time i don't think a demo is 100 percent necessary but for everything else it's like i need to try it like Absolutely. there's especially on steam there's so many bad games on there <laughs> and that's yeah. just like but I mean, most of them are either free or dirt cheap. So it's like you're not. Oh, I lost. Two that's where, that's where Steam gets you because it's like the yeah, games right. are five bucks. Okay, like what does five bucks mean compared to like on a console where you're, yeah. you're spending sixty every single time for a new yeah. game? No, no matter right. what, yeah, you're spending sixty. Right. No if ands or buts between that. And so and, and like that's what I like about Nintendo too. Being a bigger console, they do have a little bit of flexibility with the prices. But I hope just Vapor keeps up with that and that they'll do VR, they'll do all of these things and integrate it because we're, again, we're, that's the future of gaming going with it. And if you're going to introduce a new platform for gaming, you need to keep up with the times, if Absolutely. not get ahead. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious to see what they're going to bring us mm -hmm. right at the go. So see, I'm, I'm really interested to see it. What I'm what I'm thinking of too, though, is the fact that like I know Nintendo does a lot of demos, and Nintendo's also big on their indie games too. A lot of indie game developers yeah. get to work on Nintendo and release the games for the Switch. Um, yeah. From anything from crowdfunding games to anything else too. Steam is also big on that too. Steam is also very big on indie developers. Yeah. Uh, Amazon, if they do go that route though, with indie developers too, it's going to be a huge thing because most people are going to want to put their money into Amazon faster than they will into Steam or into Nintendo because of the yeah. fact that Amazon is such a huge company. So therefore, with Amazon as well too, though. You also talking about Amazon Prime, Amazon in general. If you make a game for Amazon and they have an indie game, if you want to make a physical copy of it, you can get it to your customers the next day. You can get it to your customers instantly, both digitally and also um, digitally. And fucking Casey got me over here distracted. I read that shit when I was talking. I got me fucking sidetracked. <laughs> the chat is such an asshole, dude. So, um, 
So that's the deal too. Is like Amazon is able to get that shit out to you though right away. So if they do anything at all, where yeah. it's digital with a with a physical release copy or a book or something like that, though, with all those. So there are so many more options with Amazon that right. you don't get with Steam. You don't get with other things too. Steam is established, but Amazon is bigger. Um, also, the fact that we look at you said Amazon Luna. We don't even know, too. Vapor could possibly be a code name. Look at Xbox for the longest time. Xbox had code names for all this shit. Right. So this could very well be Amazon Luna and it just be an addition to it. They're just using it as Vapor right now because of the fact that, guess what? Vapor could actually go for the idea that people vape. It's smoke. So guess what? Smoke and mirrors, and that's the whole shit with it, too. Because that's what any of, the, any of those code names that they give you are usually code names because of the fact that they see what's going on. It's just something like, yo, let's just call it this, whatever, but we're actually working on something else. So this very well could be an addition to Amazon Lunar. This could very well be where they're just trying to make it bigger, where they're trying to take over Google Stadia. They're trying to take over those ideas like that. And it's going to be including, because if Amazon does include physical board games into this gaming platform, think about it that way too. You have your indie games that go onto it. They can overnight you a game thing. It might not be only digital. It could be physical, digital, everything together. And if Amazon could do that, Amazon already has their foot in the door with indie game developer company for Kickstarter and share that too, because people put their stuff on Amazon because of the fact yeah. that it gets them out to them the next day. It doesn't cost them shit. They get a they get a cut they, and they ship it out for you. So in all reality, Amazon could, if they do this the right way and they, they go about this the right way, Amazon could legit put other companies out of business if they literally market it the right way and they cut corners, not cut corners, if they take the corner marketing of the right areas. They could really be dangerous yeah. in this area. Absolutely. All right, so that's going to end it here for us. Is there anything you want to say? Oh, I was just like, I didn't even think about the board game aspect oh. <laughs> of it. It's a really good point. So that's going to end it here for us on Keep Gaming Podcast, episode 28. Remember, we go live every Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern. If you don't got every- time to watch us live on Twitch. Facts. You can watch us on YouTube. We drop a new episode every Monday. So just type on YouTube, Keep Gaming Podcast. And you can listen mm. to us wherever you get your podcasts. Just look up Keep Gaming Podcast. And that's going to be it for us, guys. I want to thank you all for being here. Stick around for the post show. And until next time, keep gaming. Can I can I be a guest next week again? Peace. John, say goodbye. Yeah. Bye. Peace. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. <laughs>